Yo. Hold on! Sumiません でした. Well, take this. Let's go. Never thought I'd dig up something so awful and run afoul of the Yakuza. Mm. Ah, guess there's no shortcuts to money and success, are there? I always hated the idea of money ruling the world. So I chose to walk the path of the dumpster diver. Ah. But maybe it's time I suck it up and get an actual job, huh? That might be a good idea. Now, I would have been killed were it not for you. So here, I hope you get some use out of this. Anyway, I'm off to find some work. Maybe... Good. Try and take care of the ladders. You know, well, maybe I ought to work a garbage truck. You stay healthy, Katsuka-san. <laughs> Sheesh. Guess one man's trash is another man's treasure. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
You may enter. Thank you, Chairman Hoshino. Captain Takabe said it would be okay for us to talk? I heard. And I believe I already know why you've come. You've done us a great service. I would not still be leader of this clan if it weren't for you. Does that mean the Seiryu clan's gonna pull through? I can't say for sure yet. About 20 to 30 percent of our men defected to the Omi. And the ones who stayed are grumbling behind my back. And it's hard to blame them. They just found out the Jincho standoff was all a sham. Zhao told me he's giving up his position as the leader of the Liumeng. Songhui is going to lead them. Yes, I know. <laughs> you just know everything, huh? Not everything. But I'll tell you what I do know. Eventually, the Seryu clan will succumb to the Omi Alliance. What? For people who had nowhere to live outside the Grey Zones, the Great Wall of Muscle was their only protection. Now it's crumbling. That's a matter of life or death for them. Already rumors are flying into Jincho's political circles. Rumors that Ogikubo's lost his touch. I'm sure Aoki got those whispers going. He never lets a good crisis go to waste. Oh, really? Aoki knows it would destroy the party if it ever revealed their chair, Ogikubo, forged money for years. Now Aoki can easily blackmail Ogikubo and force him to step down. Aoki will become the new party chair. I don't get it. Why does he want to take Ogikubo's place so bad? The party chair manages elections, so in that role, Aoki could nominate anyone he wants. He'll control the ruling party. Therefore, he'll control the nation. The whole country will be under his thumb? Yes. Especially if I'm right about his next move. I think he's gonna try to dissolve Parliament. <clears throat> Dissolve Parliament? At a time like this? That's insane! Prime Minister, I understand how you must feel, being unable to rely on Ogi Kubo-sensei. But honestly, I have the power to support you better than he ever could. If an election were held today, I could guarantee you two-thirds of the seats, minimum. Do you have a solid plan for doing that? Yes. I'll send Bleach Japan to the districts where the citizens' Liberal Party is weakest. Bleach Japan can influence votes anywhere. They're incredibly popular. Plus, they have my endorsement. A victory for the party would, of course, move your... personal political goals forward. Oh... Tell me, do you think you have the power to maintain the party's stability right now? We don't want it breaking up for lack of support from Ogi Kubo-sensei. You can talk that way to the house, but not to me. Appoint me to party chair and hold an election. If you don't, I'll be forced to make public the nature of Ogi Kubo Sensei's crimes. That would mean the end of not only your administration, but the party itself. But there's no precedent for someone serving as both governor and party chair. Besides, you're much too young. If age is what you want, start digging for some old fossil who can stop me. That is, if you think you can find one. Anyone in particular come to mind? Aoki's scheme to destroy the Great Wall worked. Now he's got Mabuchi and the Omi at his command. So much power vested in just one man. And it had to be Masato Arakawa. Go. 
Kasuga. I know you never intended to be at the center of all this. It was pure coincidence that you were there when the soap landowner died. Wouldn't you agree? Yep. Lucky me. But one thing I don't believe is a coincidence is that you ended up in Ijin Show. Huh? What do you mean? Do you still have that fake bill? Yeah. Uh, didn't... Didn't you say you knew how it ended up on me? Yes. Only one person in the world could have put that bill in your pocket. Who? Who is it? Masumi Arakawa himself. Arakawa-san? No, he... He's the one who shot me. Yes, I'm aware he shot you. But did you ever consider that maybe he did that so you would end up here? What? That fake bill was his letter of introduction between you and me. It was to let me know that you were one of Masumi Arakawa's men. Uh, kind of a weird way to introduce us, don't you think? I think what it means is Arakawa's goals do not align with those of Ryo Aoki. Well, then, what are Arakawa's goals? I really can't say, but I do know that he means business. He wouldn't have used that bill if he didn't. Chairman, how exactly do you know Arakawa-san? Huh. Well, that's a long story. And there's a much better place than here to tell it. Heian Tower. Heian Tower? Yes. That's where my fate intertwined with Arakawa's. <laughs> he sure seems to be partial to Peking Duck. Yeah. Let's have it for lunch tomorrow. My treat. I'll make the reservation. I never formally introduced myself. I'm Iroha Yanagi. I'm helping out at the bar. Nice to meet you. I'm Ichiban Kasuga. Nice to meet you. Did he hire you to chat with the customers? Yep. I pull my weight around here. If your glass is empty, just give me a holler. I'll get you squared. Or if you just want to chat, I'm all ears. The customers who got to know me at my old bar actually used to call me Good Ear Iroha. So whenever you need an ear, I'm here to listen. Uh, sure, but what would I even tell you? I never got to come to these types of bars much. Whatever you want, really. You could even tell me about your dumb arguments with Adachi san. <laughs> You'd really want to hear that? Of course. I love hearing about the little stuff that makes people better friends. So, no subject too dull, no topic off limits, okay? Hey, 
Hey, where the hell are you taking me? Oh. Huh, so this is what it looks like. Guess there aren't as many stalls. I mean, it is the men's room. Nothing worse than when all the stalls are taken up and you're standing there about to piss or shit yourself. Feels like an eternity sometimes. Yeah, first guy to open up a stall is basically a messiah. Never would have taken you for the religious type. Hey, where the hell are you? I think I'm kind of in the mood for chocolate. Should we stop by a convenience store? Can't we go play pachinko instead? What? If you want to play pachinko, why didn't you just say so instead of whining about chocolate? No, the chocolate prizes are actually pretty good. I feel you. Man, now I want some chocolate too. Then we're off to the pachinko parlor. I swear. face is always so creepy. I wonder why. Huh? I feel like I've seen it somewhere. No way. No, really. I think I have. Yeah, we definitely know someone who looks like this. Oh, it's a dachi san Oh. Well, give me a break. I'm a little more put together than that. Actually, don't you think it looks a little too divine to be a dachi san Now that you mention it, yeah. Sorry, dachi san Guess it's not you at all. I'm about to lose it with you two. What the hell is this place? They serving up dinosaur burgers or something? Ah, oh, dumbass. It probably means you'll feel as strong as a dinosaur if you eat it. You're both wrong. They mean it's so good, you'll want to hunt down a dinosaur when you're done. Hunt down a dinosaur. <laughs> That's a hell of an imagination. What do you think, Junji Han? It looks as though the dinosaur is impressed with the size of the hamburger. That's my take, anyway. Ah, that's a new one. True. If I saw a hamburger that big, I'd be shocked, too. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's go with that. Huh? What were we talking about? Listen. Okay. Go. Hey.
Time to clean up! Watch me. Don't Take get me back on this! Huh? Bring it on. Yeah. Boy, you have fun with this. I'm up! Get serious. Let's go! Let's go! Let's do it. Well. Huh? Yeah. Check this out. Eyes on. Let's yeah. do it. Next Good time. With finesse. Watch me. Fight? Okay. Get a lie. You're in it now. Watch this. 
<laughs> no.
Chief. Hmm? My friend's got some questions about the day I was dumped in this town. Yeah. I want to know why you didn't just abandon Ichiban or dump him at a hospital. If you don't mind telling us, I'm sure we'd all appreciate it. Hmm, I see. tell you. It's as good a time as any. Uh, uh, what? There's an old tradition in this homeless camp. A responsibility passed down through the chiefs for many years. What responsibility? On occasion, when we're asked, we dispose of bodies. What? Bodies? Yeah. There's a Yakuza family from Kamurocho who pays us to do it. They're called Arakawa. Arakawa? Seriously? They... Uh, was this going on while they were still Tojo? I don't know every detail, but yes. The arrangement existed at that time. It existed before I started living here. We've dealt with all kinds of bodies. Whether they've been shot, stabbed, beaten. No matter how nasty, we dug holes and buried them under garbage. Who knows how many are there now? Back during the bubble, we got one every month. Or so I was told. Since I became chief, there's only been three. Damn. Arakawa the assassin. But there's one more secret rule. It applies to anyone the Arakawa bring here alive. Ah, uh, secret within the secret. Great. What happens if they bring someone alive? We're supposed to give the person medical aid, then let them go free, while pretending they're dead. Uh, what's up with that? In the criminal underworld, there's always people wanting to fake their own death. Gamblers, guys on the run, anyone who's afraid someone will hurt them. They send people like that here and we honor the secret agreement. I think it might actually be a service the Arakawa family provides, but obviously they don't advertise it. So it ended up being a very rare event. Is that agreement why you saved me? This live body rule? <sighs> you got it. What sort of guy dropped me off here? I mean, probably just someone from the family. I had no reason to check or anything. The guy lugged you out of the trunk of a car. You were covered in blood. He paid me and left. Didn't say a single thing the whole time. I'm sorry, Ichi. You have to die. I'm counting on you, Ichi. Huh? What the...? Hmm? After Arakawa-san shot me, I think he said something. I think it was... I'm counting on you, Ichi. What would that even mean? No clue. But the more I think about it, the more I'm sure he said that. Look, Ichiban. What? I don't want to dash your hopes or anything. 
But when you were dumped here, you were on death's doorstep. You were only alive because everything I did went exactly the way we needed it to. But it could have easily gone a different way. I know you want to trust Arakawa, but... I think Arakawa-san had to shoot me. All the other Yakuza at that meeting were watching him. Huh? Never mind. You don't get it. Forget I said anything. Watch me. Take this. You want to fight? Come on now. Okay. Watch this. Have fun with this. Good luck next time. No.
Watch me. Don't get caught. Take this. You want to fight? Eyes on me. Okay. Get alive. Have fun with this. I'm up. Going in. Well, don't get cocky. Good <laughs> luck next time. <laughs> hey, you guys want to hear a scary story? Where'd that come from? Sure, whatever. I was at a laundromat a little while back, and as anyone would, I put my clothes in the dryer. When there was about five or so minutes left, my cell rang, and I went outside to talk. And? After ten minutes, I hung up and went back inside. <gasps> the dryer was still going. And the time left? Thirty minutes. Whoa, that is freaky. Did you extend the time or something? Of course not. Why would I do that? Yeah, no good dryer shrank my favorite shirt because of that. The thing got all tight. Still wore it, though. You still wore it? Didn't think this story could get scarier, but... Hold on! Oh. Yeah. ありがとうな。
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 